Hi, my name is Patricia Musolino. I'm a stroke and critical care neurologist at Massachusetts General Hospital, and I've been working over the last 10 years on developing gene therapies for a group of disorders that affect the vessels and that cause a cerebrovascular disease. So there are several genes that can affect the vasculature, either by altering the endothelial or the smooth muscle cell or the extracellular matrix of the vessel wall. And among the several genetic vasculopathies, those that affect the smooth muscle cells tend to produce narrowing on the cerebral arteries by a process of proliferation of these mutant smooth muscle cells. This restricts the flow to the brain, causing white matter injury, and when it gets to critical points on occlusion, arterial ischemic strokes. So there are multiple different genes that converge in this pathomechanism, the smooth muscle cell proliferation. And more than 8,000 patients a year are being diagnosed with different genetic vasculopathies that cause smooth muscle cell dysfunction. Of those, up to 15% are caused by mutations on a single gene, the ACTA2 which codes for the alpha smooth muscle acting isotype 2. And very importantly, the most severe phenotype causing the cerebrovascular disease is all convergent in a single amino acid, the arginine 179, uh, in that gene, causing a multisystemic smooth muscle cell disorder syndrome. So these mutations in the arginine 179 that cause the multisystemic disease are characterized by being inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. And there are mutations in this single base that changes the arginine to a histidine, a cysteine, or a serine, most commonly a histidine. They can be diagnosed soon after birth because these children have dilated pupils. Their smooth muscle cells around the iris cannot constrict the pupil to light. And that's why all my patients wear sunglasses for life indoors and outdoors. They also present with hypoxia from a communication between the aortic and the pulmonary artery called PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. So they go on to live with the normal, relatively normal development, neurologically speaking. But as you can see on the right side, where we can see a cerebral angiogram, a controlled cerebral vasculature is very different than the vasculature that these kids have where the elastic arteries like the carotid are dilated as, and as they enter the brain and become muscular arteries and in small vessels, they become narrow because, the, because of the smooth muscle cell dysfunction. The strokes don't happen until the kids start walking. And in the second decade of life, the aortic disease hits in and dissections or replacements are necessary but no medical or surgical treatment can arrest the disease progression. And most of these patients succumb to aortic disease, brain disease, or death in the first three decades of life. We are a main center referral for these patients across the world. And without treatment, we are seeing these kids having the progressive cerebral vasculopathy that leads to the white matter disease and the strokes. So let me share you the story of one of my patients. This is Maria, and she was able to develop normally. And in fact, her diagnosis didn't arrive until she was six years of age and started having transient ischemic attacks. And as you can see, when she was 10 days old, her cerebral vasculature had this carotid artery as it comes into the head with no significant narrowing. And that ratio was preserved, but as she develop this smooth muscle cell proliferation, narrow the vessel and produce the occlusion that led to the multiple strokes in different territories. And in few months, she lost the ability to see, to speak and ambulate, and she is currently wheelchair bound. So without a treatment, we are seeing these kids going from one stroke to another one. So what is underlying the, the mechanism underlying this uh, vascular disease in the brain? As the protein is mutant, cannot polymerize and form that cytoskeleton that the smooth muscle cells necessitate to contract and control the blood pressure, but also maintain the vessel wall physiology. And they tend to proliferate, and that growth of these cells goes towards the lumen of the cell, narrowing the flow. 
And this process, we call it intima proliferation. Very importantly, this pathomechanism is shared by multiple different single gene disorders that affect the smooth muscle cells. And not only single genetic conditions cause smooth muscle cell proliferation, but also cardiovascular atherosclerotic disease, such as coronary artery disease, carotid disease, or intracranial atherosclerosis. So the gene therapy platform we've been working on hinges on developing novel AAVs that have a higher specificity and selectivity for brain endothelium and smooth muscle cells, but also smooth muscle cells across the body to be able to tackle the multisystemic part of the disease. We are accelerating the translation to human by giving another uh, step of specificity with a synthetic smooth muscle cell disease-specific promoter that would allow us to be more selective in where we de deploy our CRISPR-Cas prime editing strategy that we are using to correct this single letter, this single base that is causing the missense mutations and the disruption of the protein function. We have a de-risk strategy as AAV2, already FDA approved, for example, can target and transduce all the cells in the cerebral vasculature in the mouse, as you can see in the lower panel. Moreover, we are also developing proprietary new AAVs that can give us higher selectivity and a transient transduction to prevent off-target effects of the CRISPR-Cas gene editing. So what have we accomplished so far? In vitro work in immortalized cell lines have shown that we have a very selective, efficient, and with minimal off-targets gene editing. We have validated this in patient cells and restored their functional phenotype in vitro. Our next steps are going into the mouse model conditional knock-in that we have developed with our AAVs to do the proof of concept with the long-term vision of at some point probably changing the platform from a viral vector to a non-viral delivery in collaboration with Dr. Natalie Artsy here at MGH and the Brigham. So we are aiming for the first system, systemic gene therapy for a devastating cerebrovascular disorder. And our clinical trial has already identified the endpoints and the population, the cohort that we can first treat on this first indication. And we are aiming to normalize the blood pressure, which is an immediate biomarker, and to prevent the narrowing of the carotid artery, which we know precedes the white matter injury and the strokes. So we are going into an ultra rare disease with the aim of doing a patient customized approach of gene editing to restore the function of these smooth muscle cells to allow vessels to remodel and allow the brain to develop without injury. We have a testing platform that leverages patient-derived cells with ex vivo models and in vivo model systems with conditional knocking mouse. But the real vision here is to go not only to this particular mutation in the ACTA2, but to move it to other mutations in the ACTA2 gene and other genes, as I show you, that converge in that pathomechanism of smooth muscle cell dysfunction. And the dream is to be able to de-risk targeting smooth muscle cells to the point that we can then go and, and, and target and reverse or control signaling pathways that are involved and known in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And with that, I'm going to leave you and I look forward to the questions and answer session. Thank you.